Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've had this question going around, why did I sell the Corvette? And yes, I did sell it. And I wanna thank everyone for helping me out and uh, sending people my way. So let's talk about it. Alrighty guys, so why did I sell the Corvette? You know, I've been getting all these questions, you know, was it the wrong thing for me to do? Was it the right thing to do? You know, uh, why did I do it? So uh, let's get into it. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about some history of the car. Uh, it was my grandmother's car and my grandpa's car before that. And uh, the car was handed down to me. Now, before y'all hang me at the stake here, like, why did you do this? You know, the car's handed down to you. What was your reasoning? Well, I've enjoyed the car for a long time. You know, I mean, it's been around majority of my life. So I've got my enjoyment out of it and I've had a good time. And also the car kind of came to a stage in its life. It was like, okay, do you need to keep it original or do you need to put some performance in it? So it was right there at that line it was ready for stuff to happen. So, you know, what was my thoughts on that? Well, number one, I know you guys know about the GTO. You know, that's where the passion is right now. That's where all the time is right now. So there's no time for hardly any other projects. It's crazy right now. We've got a ton of projects going on at one time just on this car, so it's crazy. But anyways, back to the Corvette here. So I knew it was at a stage in its life, it needed some stuff, you know. The biggest thing it needed, it needed a good paint job. Uh, it is a fiberglass car, so it would, you know, it had the typical fiberglass problems, you know, the cracking of the fiberglass and the spider web looking paint job, you know, that sort of thing. It was ready for some love. The other thing was interior panels, it needed both door panels. They were both kind of get to the point where they were getting drive rotted and that sort of thing. The rest of it looked good. I mean, the rest of it was in pristine shape. So, I mean, it didn't need much. Now, engine-wise, and this was a huge, huge deciding factor for me, I was very, very disappointed in the power of this thing. And I mean, so much so, my four-door Tempest, I mean, it's got a stock 6.0 Vortec motor in it out of a Silverado, will literally run circles around it. My four-door car would outrun the Corvette that I had. And, um, you know, it just, that was very disappointing. So I automatically knew, I was like, if I'm keeping this thing, it has to, it has to outrun my four door car. It just doesn't make sense, you know? And uh, now the handling of the car is definitely way better than what my four door car is. So I'm not gonna take that away from it. But power wise, lacking big time. Now, motor, what did it have in it? It has 350. Uh, just a stock motor, no nothing ever done to it, never even been touched. I don't even think the motor ever even been pulled out of it. And it was just a cruiser. Um, now, once I pulled the numbers on it, the motor it has in it, you know, and I, one part of it surprised me of what the numbers are, <laughs> and the other part of it completely didn't surprise me because I drove it, you know. And, and if you'd have told me that the car from the factory, you know, with the numbers of what the motor is, it's in it. I mean, it's like 210 horsepower, it, if those numbers are correct, which it feels like 210 horsepower or less. I mean, seriously, uh, it's definitely a cruise around It's not no go-getter and, uh, you know, let's go stomp on some Mustangs or let's go get something no <laughs> it's not it's just you better you better you better keep that bad boy at home if that's what you're thinking but uh no it it was definitely lacking in the power department so that that was a huge deciding factor on me i was like man it, to get this thing to run good we need to pull the motor out you know just to get it up to 300 horsepower probably need to do a head cam swap just instantly just to get it up there then again it's like pulling the motor out do you just want to do that you know, or this, that, and the other. And I was just like, ah, it's getting to be too much work and too much money. So at the end of the day, we're looking at, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,500, $8,000, somewhere in there just to get the car up to where 
I could, you know, start to really enjoy it. And I, I was like, nah, I'd rather spend eight grand on this bad boy back here, and <laughs> it needs it. So I was like, you know, that's that's a huge factor out there. Lastly, you know, the other thing that I, that was really disappointing in the car. I'm six foot six, so I'm a really tall guy, and as you can tell by the cage that's in my car, I'm literally sitting in the back seat if it did have a back seat. That's, I mean, that's how far back I'm sitting in this thing. So, I mean, I got some really long legs, and my top half is really tall too. So, in the Corvette, when I drove it, I was literally hunched down like this, and to drive it, it was very uncomfortable, and uh, it was very hard for me to get out of it. It's actually easier for me to hop out of my GTO with the door bars in it than it is to get out of that 1977 bet, which, you know, was hilarious. Hannah always made fun of me. She's like, are you getting out of it today? <laughs> I was like, hey, it's hard. You know, I mean, it, it was tough. But uh, anyways, that was a huge deciding factor on me. And at the end of the day, all of it being said, you know, I just got to the point of, didn't have time you know i know a lot of guys are probably like man you should have just kept it put a car cover on it, put it in the corner and you know 10 years down the road 20 years down the road it'd be worth more and you you know you regret it so much and you know guys i'm the type of person i really have a hard time if something's just sitting i just mentally it messes with me hard so i'm just like no we're either working on it while it's sitting or we're driving it or we're racing it or something it, something has to be happening and you know it was just getting more and more of life kicking in you know working full-time job working on this thing every minute of the day that I'm not at work so I mean it's just what no time and yes I know this will come to a close on all the fabrication work you know have more time but it just I was just like man I need a transmission I need the EFI system on the car, and lastly, I need the fuel system for it. So, I mean, those are huge items right there I still got to buy, and those are crazy expensive. So, it was just like, it's time for the vet to go. Now, yes, again, and we'll kind of hit back on this here. Yes, the car was handed down to me, you know, and I know a lot of people has kind of said some things to me like, hey, you know, do you think, you know, the grandma or grandpa will be disappointed in this? they want to keep it you know and that sort of thing and I will make this very known you know me and my grandpa and grandma were super close I mean tight always into something we're all in the cars all in the racing all in the horses or just about anything that had horsepower involved we were into it and my grandpa he was the type he was constantly trading and selling and doing and this that and the other so yeah, I think they're okay with it, and it's going to a good cause. It's going to this bad boy back here, and uh, I think it's going to be a good at the end of the day. Uh, so, definitely no regrets there, and uh, I hope everybody will understand that. So, uh, that being said, you know, those are some huge factors that was going on. Those are some huge things, and, uh, you know, and I'm going to touch on one thing here just as a suggestion for anyone who's looking into a Corvette. You know, do I suggest one? Do I suggest the year that I have? Do I suggest something else? You know, so let's talk about that for a second. So, do I suggest the car that I have? You know, and it depends on who you are. You know, I can't just say, oh, it's a horrible car. No, I mean, the car ran fine. It did good. You can start it and go and do whatever you want to do with it. But, um, you know, performance was a big one for me. You know, it just depends on do you want performance. You know, if you want the performance... You know, I don't suggest, you know, the model that I had. It didn't make much power at all. So I would suggest a different year. Now, if the car would have been like in the 60s or, you know, 50s, oh, that's a different animal. We'd have kept it, put it in a corner and done something. I promise you that. We'd been a whole different ball game then. But just the body style of the car, the year of the car, the amount of power of it, it just depends on what you want to do. I think that car would have made a perfect cruiser rounder have a good time, go to drive-ins, go to car shows, just cruising, going on trips with your your friend or whatever, you know what I mean? That's what I think that car was meant to do. Now, other types of Corvettes. 
Now this is where I, I'm, I'm very split here, very split. So me, when I think Corvette, I think performance. I want to go fast, I want to have good handling. You know, that's, that's my thoughts in a sports car, that's my thoughts in a vet. So me, I, I really lean towards, you know, 69 and back. Those are the ones I really like. That's just my preference. And especially the 50s and all those things are just wicked looking. But, uh, you know, slap a big old motor in them and, you know, have a good old time. That's, that's you know, it's kind of what I'm all about. But uh, now, that being said, I really do like the body style and the performance and the amount of upgradable parts that's available for like 95 and up models you know what i mean especially when you got a corvette that's got any of the ls platforms in it, ls1 and up you know any of those you can bolt on insane power and have a good time so that's just kind of my feelings and my thoughts on that so if you want performance and you want something to build into you know get one that's wrecked get one that you can build into or if you got the money go out and buy a brand new and you got performance it's gonna run good you know but uh, again it just all depends on what you want to do and uh, make yourself happy have fun with it have something that you can enjoy your family you and your friends can enjoy it have a good time and do what you want to do but at the end of the day remember it's all about you and what you want to do so let's wrap this bad boy up here I think I've talked plenty on this subject, so uh, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and don't forget to comment down below. Until next time, you guys have a good one.